And we're back. I always say that once before I unmute my mic. <laughs> Thank goodness I have OBS open specifically show me when my mic is doing stuff and when it's not. Alright, so, um... Where do I want to go first? Uh, this way. But I don't want to go to the... Okay, plot! Ugh! What the heck was that sound? Oh, you've just had it! Would someone please stop that awful racket? What's the matter, sir? Who are you calling, sir? I'm a young man! Oh, but never mind that, I'm furious! That sound, that horrible noise, I can't get a wink of sleep at night! Used to be the tower only made noise every once in a while. Recently, it's been roaring non-stop. How am I supposed to sleep? You hear me, you big jerk of a tower? How am I supposed to sleep? Please calm yourself, sir. Do you have any idea what the source of the deafening din is? You know, now that you mention it, I don't have the slightest clue about that. I've heard it's the roar of a huge monster that lives up in the tower, but who knows? So the noise is coming from the tower, is it? Well, that doesn't really help us much. If I want... I want to go this way, though, because there's another math problem to do. Hate this problem. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, yes. Alright. Glass jar holds a single germ. After one minute, it splits into two germs. One minute after that, two germs split again, forming a total of four. Continue at this rate, a single germ can multiply to fill the whole jar in exactly one hour. Knowing this, how long in minutes would it take to fill the jar if you had started with two germs? You're skipping a step in an exponential growth, but only the first step. But that does more... Um, one factorial 60 times. No, not 60 times, right? I forget how factorials and exponent exponents actually work, I guess. Because it's not an exponent. Because 1 to any exponent is just 1, because you're multiplying it by itself. That's not what we're doing. We're doubling. Times 2, times 2, times 2, times 2, times 2. You know what? I'm gonna cheat. Where's that calculator? Calculator! 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. This is a big ass number. This is going to be a big-ass number. They they can't possibly expect us to do it this way. There's got to be some logic to it. Let's take a step back and think. Your answer is the amount of time it takes for the two germs to fill the jar. It takes one minute for one germ to turn to two. How much additional time is needed to fill the jar? Oh! It's a trick question! Because you're only taking away the first step. The answer is 59 minutes. It takes one minute for single germ to split in two. Therefore, starting with two germs instead of one only saves you one minute. Yep. Spot on. Excellent job. The jar is actually kind of neat. Why don't we take it with us? My boy, it's covered in grime. Hmm, what's this? There's something hidden inside the jar. I knew... You... I think you're right. Luke, reach your hand in and see inside, will you? Painting scrap. Not what I was expecting. 
Okay. Moving on. Sorry for that. Just taking. Oh, hey! I accidentally found a hint coin. Are you still mad about things, sir? Eh, no. Ma'am, do you have a puzzle for me? Everybody else does. No, you're just making fun of him for being mad again. Which, understandable. Alright, let's go to the puzzle index. Puzzle I haven't solved yet. A worm's dream. Oh, no. Mystery item. This is on the park road. Wait, I'm on the park road, aren't I? Yeah, I am. Go away, sir. I don't want to talk to you. There's a puzzle on this road somewhere. And I will have it. I don't remember where this puzzle is. Oh, right. It's on that thing. Oh, it's that hidden puzzle we saw earlier. Alright, puzzle number 111, mystery item. Puzzles worth 36 because I suck. One of the four shapes below has one less match than the rest of them. While studying these four small shapes, your friend approaches you with a riddle. I'm thinking of something that is necessary for human life. It appears in just about every house you've ever visited and decreases in amount gradually the longer it is around. What am I thinking of? Move one match in your picture to inform the answer to your friend's puzzle. So what we have established through the hints, item is you're after is necessary for human life, is found in most homes, disappears gradually over time. You have to answer with the matches provided, but don't worry about arranging them into a picture. It's an idea you're after. So I figure we're spelling a word. Last of the four shapes seems to be missing a match. Someone must have made off with it to light a stove and get dinner ready. Say, are you getting hungry at all? See, it's hinting at food. Have you ever heard the expression three square meals a day? Judging... So we're not making a word, are we? Judging by the matches here, someone was trying to make a fourth, but got full before finishing the task. By the way, have you noticed how much the final clusters of matches looks like an uppercase D? See, then that makes it sound like it's a word. So I thought it would be food. But the problem is you can't take away anything to make that an F. And it hints that you want to add something to the end. So are we spelling a word, or are we coming up with an idea? See, this is why I'm stuck on this. So, if you do have an idea, a hint, perhaps. I'm open to it, because this is one I'm stuck on. And there's still one other puzzle I still have to figure out, but that one is figuring out logic of moving puzzle, block, moving block puzzles, and I, I suck at that. But this one, yeah. If you've got a suggestion, I'm willing to take it, because it's got me really stumped. It's going to be a pretty easy solution, I know, or at least it's going to be a fairly easy concept. And for anybody who doesn't remember, matches, you can move and rotate as much as you want. Eud. Don't have any moves left. Eud. Or my favorite, noob. See? It fits! It's me! I just don't get this one. So certain that the answer is food that it's messing up any other possible answer to this solution, to, to this riddle. 
that there could possibly be. I have to go away just for just a minute. Apologies for that. I'm back. <sighs> okay. Can't make four squirt meals today. I think cook or something was also something I considered, but obviously you can't make a K early. stuck. Someone was trying to make a fourth but got full before finishing task. By the way, if you notice how much the final class score of letters looks like an uppercase D. It just, it must be a word, right? Sorry, bump, bump the mic stand again. Alright, well, since folks don't have a suggestion, I think I'm going to look up the answer because I've gone through all the hint coins and I've spent probably a total of an hour on this puzzle over the many course of the course of multiple streams. So, puzzle... One, 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 Curious Village. word food is the answer. The problem was I couldn't visualize how to make it say food. That was the problem the entire time. Yep. The chat is absolutely correct. Thank you, chat. Well, here's my guess. Now keep in mind. Legends Apprentice saves the day. I made it very clear that I was asking for help that time. That's gone for the rest of the puzzles. It'll only come back next time I specifically ask for it. That's right, the answer is food. Make sure you visit the grocery store before you run out of snacks. It's definitely the word food, and I knew it the entire time. I just couldn't think for some reason of how to make it look like food. Wish all puzzles were this easy. Shut up, Luke! <laughs> Alright. Well, that didn't give us a piece of the mysterious gizmo, though. All right, and I don't like the new blinking on painting, so go up there. Okay. Uh, what is the other one I'm missing? Puzzle index. The apple one. Where's the apple? It's the clock tower. Let's go to the clock tower and give that one another shot. No, this is the plaza. Clock tower is this way.
It's that hidden puzzle we saw earlier. A worm's dream. Okay. So, the hints say I have to move this square first. This should be number one priority. There's two ways I can move it, obviously, right or down. So let's try moving it down. And I've already gotten to the place where I keep getting stuck, where two of the corners need to be swapped. <sighs> you see, the problem with this is it's just like a Rubik's Cube, only not in cube form. Thus, you need to know the algorithms to move it to, of how to move pieces. The problem is, and while they're much simpler than a Rubik's Cube, and no, I haven't ever accomplished solving a Rubik's Cube, I had a roommate who studied those algorithms and everything. I don't know any of the algorithms at all, so I don't know how to move things right. So, time to play around. Thing is, every time you move, you really only have two options to fill up the square. Well, actually, you've got like four. This one has three. I can... But you only have two technically because this is the one I already moved, so I, that'd just be undoing the thing. I don't care about this score, this timer, by the way, and how many times I move the bloody blocks. Ooh. I almost got it again, but now two blocks that need to be switched. No. Just keep moving, I guess. Yeah. This is... That's exactly the problem, is you just gotta keep moving. And the problem is I've been... Just getting tons and tons of... Okay, obviously I'm doing something wrong. Because now I've just repeated the exact same problem as before. So I'm doing something dramatically wrong. Let's put you in the right place. Let's focus getting you guys. Same problem. Same bloody problem. Okay. Once again, apologies, but for being quiet instead of doing proper commentary at this point, but that is common when I'm overthinking something. Same problem. Okay. Anytime I want to move something, I want to move this into this square. Everything has to rotate 90 degrees. And that's my problem. Let's see. Boom. Just rotated this entire section 90 degrees. How do I manipulate it? So that's not the issue here.
See? And now I need to move this there. Just keeps happening. It's like there's a way to move these blocks that I'm not seeing. Let's just mess everything up. Everything goes goes away. Everything goes to hell. Because if I don't see a pattern in how it looks anymore, then that can't trick me into moving them into the wrong spots. And now I'm back to the first problem. <laughs> Eternal sword. Internet blacked out for a bit, but I think it's good now. Oh, sucks your internet cut out, but it happens. <sighs> back to the first problem. See, I messed everything up, and every single time I try and fix it, it gets back to this. And that 428 counter, though, <laughs> it's gonna get higher. It's gonna get higher. <laughs> <sighs> I just don't understand the algorithms you need to move stuff in a sliding block puzzle. About to, I was about to cheer that I did it. I was about to cheer because I thought I understood it. And then this happened! <laughs> 500 plus! Bottom left needs to go get to the top right. <sighs> Bottom left needs to go to the top right is a no-no. Because that matches there and it doesn't match down here. I did make the same mistake as to thinking though that these were interchangeable. But then when I move them to so like their interchangeable spots they didn't match at all so no they do match that's that's not one of the problems the problem is i just don't i don't understand now if only i could never move that again and still get what I want. But I can't. Once again, back to the same problem. <laughs> Never mind my mistake. That's that's fine. 
Lenny, I made the exact same mistake. It is totally a reasonable mistake to make. And and, and the hint sort of uh, only eight movable parts. Take your time. Blah blah blah. Don't get stuck moving the same pattern. Have you noticed a few of the pieces look very similar to others? Focus your attention on those. See right here, hint number two tells you that, and it's like, what are you trying to say here? Huh? Is there a trick here? And my mind is now going to that. Like, is there a trick question in this? So you know what? I'm going to restart. I've done this for almost an hour. That's pretty much my cutoff. Puzzle number 107. Let's look it up. The apple is the same shape as Lamar's brain right now. <laughs> You're not wrong! <laughs> Uh, that website isn't helping me. Okay, step-by-step -step solution. Move middle tile down. Move middle left tile right. Top left down. Top middle left. And the middle tile up. Middle left right. Bottom left up. Bottom middle left. Bottom right left. Middle right down, middle right, middle left right, bottom left up, bottom right, left, Move middle right down, middle tile right, middle left right, bottom left up, bottom middle left, middle tile down, top middle down, top left right, middle left up. I think I've got it! Yep, not proud, but I am totally willing to look up walkthroughs if I've spent all the hidden coins and I've spent like 30 to 45 to an hour, depending on the, the puzzle, on trying to do it. And if the chat can help me, I mean, and that's, I'm not saying you guys are dumb as me. Trust me, I'm not. That puzzle is just one of those that you just, unless you have a step-by-step -step guide, you can't really help somebody unless you know something about the specific logic of the puzzle that I'm missing. Made the little worm very happy. For a simple slide puzzle, it was pretty difficult, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Shut up. As we're moving things around, did you notice several pieces of the puzzle had almost identical duplicates? Yes. I could do this one in my sleep. Shut up, Luke! See, <laughs> Lamar, it was an easy puzzle. Quiet, you! Alright. So, if we look at our box, we have solved and found there were 43 puzzles. Excellent. So why don't we progress the plot? Talk to Crouton. Ramon? He hasn't been around here today. Uh, looks like we hit another dead end. Too bad you couldn't find him. He usually skips out of work and comes here to gossip and have coffee. And you know, speaking of gossip, I've heard of some weird rumors from customers lately. Recently, there's been talk of a strange old man running around in St. Mysterio camp kidnapping people. Eternal Sword wants out of my prison box. <laughs> Fine! But you have to promise me that you'll be good if I let you out. Kidnapper? Who is this old man? I heard all this secondhand, so you got me there. You need to find a better source of village gossip. I want to try your luck at the cafe. 
Usually you'll hear rumors straight from the source there. It's almost sunset now, so the cafe should be open for dinner. Mysterious old man kidnapping village folk. Now that's a rumor. Eternal Sword can make no promises. <laughs> Chapter 3, The Missing Servant. Chapter solved. Technically, no. But I suppose the cafe is as good a place as any. Oh! Oh, goody! I missed puzzles. <laughs> um, we will go ahead and take care of those next, actually, if it's possible. Professor, it's getting dark out. I'm afraid that's my cue to start closing up shop. Come by tomorrow if you get hungry. Luke, let's take a moment to sum up our findings. We have a strange roaring tower, disappearing villagers, and an odd elderly kidnapper. It's all so bizarre. I can't make any sense of it at all, Professor. I think we finally have got some clues on our hands, my boy. Observing the nightlife of this village will tell us more of what we need to know. Great idea, Professor. Chapter 4. Night Falls. It turned dark and Ramon still hasn't returned. Continue the investigation to find clues. Yes, save progress. So we're gonna go straight to finding the uh, to talk doing those missing puzzles. So puzzle marathon. I was doing so well, I thought too, with all the puzzles that I found. Number twenty-four, milk pitchers. Puzzles worth fifty picarets. This is gonna suck. On the counter, we have a 10 part pitcher full of milk and empty seven. It's one of these again? Really? Okay, well, remembering the logic from last time. Anytime you have a, a pitcher that's completely full, you're probably doing it wrong. An empty seven quart pitcher and an empty three quart. The pitchers are marked, unmarked, but you're. And your task is to divide the 10 quarts of milk so that both the 10 quart pitcher and the seven quart pitcher are holding exactly five quarts. Plays the guile theme. <laughs> dun 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 Alright, well that goes into that. Nope, messed up. Also messed up. Restart, restart. Okay. This goes into here. This goes into here. Well, the Lanny, the entire point of this game is puzzles. It's just, I feel dumb, which is bad because I actually have a really high IQ. I have three AA degrees. I should be smart, and this game makes me feel really dumb. But that's because logic and math are my weak points. I'm really bad at that, and that's what this is. It's all like logic and mathematical style thinking. So... It's entirely possible that I just suck at this sort of thing. So this goes back into that. No. Everything's messed up. Okay. I think my first movements are flawed. I want five in each. No, no, no. I think I had the right concept here. I find that the, like I mentioned this in the first stream, the, but I played Professor Layton versus Phoenix, right? And that's sort of my introduction into the series. And from everything I've heard, those pu the puzzles in that game are actually pretty much a, a good difficulty lower 
than the actual Layton series. And if this is the first game in the Layton series that I'm playing right now, and I don't know if it gets worse, like, as difficulty-wise, I'm in for some fun. <laughs> okay. Alright, so if I just pour you into there, then that doesn't help, does it? If I just pour you in there, that doesn't help. So let's pour you back there. Let's pour you back there. Go back a step or two. No, okay. Pour you into there. Let's pour you into there. Pour you into there. Never played the Phoenix Wright one. If you like the Phoenix Wright series, or you like the Professor Layton series, play it. But I would recommend playing, if you're going to, play like the first three Phoenix Wright games first. Uh, I'm pretty sure the trilogy is on the eShop for 3DS and Wii U, maybe? I know it's on the eShop. But um, play the, the first trilogy for Phoenix Wright. It's amazing. It's so much fun. Um, and then play Phoenix Wright vs. Layton, because it is something else. If you don't... Well, if you don't have the time, then why would you watch it? Uh, if you like both, play Phoenix Wright vs. Professor Layton. Uh, there, it is amazing. If you don't have a 3DS and you can't afford one and you don't want to get one just for that game, which is completely understandable, I recommend uh, going to Elegy of Games. It, he's on Twitch. Look, just twitch.tv slash Elegy of Games and look at his highlights. He does what he calls voice casts, where he, he's a voice actor and he gives voices to every character in the it, that shows up. And he does it for... All, he's done all of the Phoenix Wright games, and tomorrow night he'll finish do the finale for Phoenix Wright, uh, Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright. So, def, if you want to do that, he has all of his past broadcasts on highlights. So if you go to his highlights, you can totally watch him play through the entire Phoenix Wright series. Then he's doing his Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright. And then after he's done with that, it's going to be a little break. And then he's going to start doing all the Pro Professor Layton games. That's one of the reasons I want to do this, because I want to play them for myself first and then see how he goes through them. Anyway, that's my spiel uh, telling everybody to go to a caster who's a couple thousand times bigger than me. <laughs> Who doesn't really need my support. Alright, 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 alright. Uh, what's the logic here, Haven? What's the logic here? Nope, everything goes back to the beginning because I just messed it up. No problem, Lanny. It's just like one of those things where. It, the, the voice acting he does is fantastic, hilarious, and he really gets into it. So it is just the funniest thing in the world seeing him voice act stuff. And he and his latent impression is spot on. He's not always spot on for all the characters. It takes him time sometimes to evolve the voice and get it right. But for Leighton, it is on target. It is beautiful. No, put that back. Mm, now I'm back at the beginning. Turtle Sword, largest face bomb. You said you messed up, but there, you were two moves from completion. Was I? Oh no! Oh no! Okay, um. Let's see if I can get something like that repeated then. You face palm all you want at me. It's totally justified. Totally justified. Okay, that I messed up. That I messed up. I know for a fact I messed that up. You there. You there. You go there. You go there. No, and then I messed that up. Shoot! Okay. 
have to remember my goal is just to make it five and five. So I think that's where I'm messing up too. Okay, put that back. Put that back. You go there. You go there. You go there. And you go there. You go there. And that just makes it back to this. I'll check that out later, Lanny, once the uh, stream's over, which is, should be over in about 15 minutes, depending on how many of these puzzles I solve. All right, to get to U to 5 and U to 5. See, if I try to actually logic this puzzle out and do it in my head, like plan my steps, I will get it wrong every single time if I try and plan it. If I just keep playing with it, it'll come to me. Restart. I messed that up. Ah, restart. Okay, come on. You have like the first five moves already in your head. You just haven't. Yes, don't have them to, to finger strength to finger concepts yet. Okay, so getting it to six and four is a good start. Very good start. Getting this to one seems like it would help. No, because then I don't want to put it there. I don't want to put that there, so no, this this gets messed up. So put that back to four. If I get back to three though, that now just makes it seven. I think the best way to think about this is what are my options from here? And if I keep the concept of don't refill them back to max in my head, then, all right, my two options are there or there. If I put it here, I can't just put this into here because that'll refill it. But if I put it into here to refill that, boom. So I'm back to here. If I put this into this, it messes everything up. But this into this just reverses everything. That into that fixes this problem somewhat. No, and I just reversed it. Crud, I had it! I almost had it! And my brain can't repeat it! So 6 and 4 doesn't help. Unless it's 6 and 4... In which case... Hmm... No, see? What the hell, Haven? What'd you think you were doing there? No, Haven, what'd you think you were doing there? Come on! You almost had this. No, because I can do that just by doing this and get the same result. I almost had it. That makes me mad. But it's okay, because that happens sometimes. Now there's two in this. I think that's important.
No, I think I almost had it. I think I almost had it. No, but I think I messed it up. There's no need to give hints, Eternal Sword, because I just completed it! <laughs> if you keep at it long enough, you'll eventually come across the solution. The shortest possible solution requires nine moves. I don't know how many moves I did mine in. Strange Gizmo! Alright, well, let's keep at it. Uh, 18. Dust and Dust Pad. Puzzle number 18 of Dust and Dust Pad. Ten Pickerets, so hopefully this one will be easy. As you can see, what we've got here is trash and dustpan made of matchsticks. You can move two matchsticks to change the picture so the dustpan is holding the trash. Oh. Okay. I see what you're trying to say here. But then what's this match doing out here? Okay, this sort of has to be part of the dust- the- the trash can. Oh, so the dustpan is holding the trash. Okay. That's entirely different. That's a horse a different color. Boom. Here's my answer. Who cares if it's upside down? It's still Every holding it. Has an answer. That's correct. Do your part to keep Saint Mysterio clean. Uh, hand woven rug. Let's go to Layton's. The audio is kind of messing up in my ears. I don't know if you guys are getting it like I am. Uh, racetrack puzzle riddle. Number three. 31. Racetrack riddle, 30 pickets. The distance three racehorses can run around the racetrack in one minute is listed below. One minute, horse A can run two, horse B can run three, horse C can run four. So horse A is half as fast as C. The horses line up at the running the starting line and start running at the same direction. How many minutes will pass before all three horses line up at the starting line again? Well, you just need the multiples of each of them, right? So, 12. So... It'll be... Times 3? Oh, no, no, no. It's more it's more complicated than that, isn't it? Gotcha. Okay. Times... 4. No. Times... 6... Equals 12. How many minutes will pass before all three are at the starting line again? Times four. It's Twelve laps. And times three. Was twelve laps. So that means they'll all complete it, but the, look at the variable minutes. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for how to make this number match with this number matching? It 
does it have to be an even number minute? <laughs> probably. Probably, just based on how this game's inputs works. Okay. Clear. Time sign. Yet again, math. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But this one actually sounds a bit like a trick question. It does, doesn't it? This one definitely feels like a trick question. Hint, help me out. Someone in a hurry might jump to the conclusion that you need to find the lowest common multiple between the three numbers. Read the problem over again and see if you can't clear things up for yourself. Yeah, it's definitely a trick question of some kind. Okay. Courses line up at the starting line and start running at the same direction. That seems like it's an important hint. Because if they were running in opposite directions, it still wouldn't matter. They would come back to the starting line again. No, see, if it was one... You're absolutely right, Lanny, but you messed up the thing, dude. You weren't supposed to tell me any hints or anything until I was ready to ask. But I was coming to that answer, so I'm not mad at you because I was coming to that exact answer. You're absolutely right. It is one minute because in one minute, one A completed two, a, a, B completed three, and C completed four. It doesn't matter how many laps they completed. The point is that they're back at the, at the front line. I was just coming to that very answer. But yeah, Lanny, do careful with those hints. Another puzzle solved. That does give us enough time to move on to the next puzzle, though. It's okay. It's okay. I'm not mad. Like I said, I was coming to that answer right on my way. Uh, if you're gonna guess, try not to guess out loud. Just that's all I'm saying. Uh, so let's go to number forty-three. Three umbrellas. Eternal. <laughs> Be careful with that thing. Guessing? That's a bad lid. Uh, number 43. Three umbrellas. Puzzles worth 20 picarettes. Three identical looking umbrellas are sitting upright in a stand. Assuming the owners don't check the umbrella's labels, what percentage chance is there that only two people will walk off with their own umbrella? Um, percentage that only two will walk off with their umbrella. This one's tough, because once again, math, but it's statistics, so it's a math I'm familiar with. So you would be tempted to say, well, the first person has a 33% chance of picking up their umbrella. Second person has a 50% chance of picking out their umbrella. But what's the last person's chance? It's not 100, because their umbrella might have already been taken. So it's actually 33% chance, 33% chance, 33% chance. So a 33% chance times the 33% chance. Let me write that down real fast. 0.33. Wait, can I? I can totally write on here. There. So 0.33 times 0.33. And yes, I know those don't look like threes. I'm trying to draw, write with mouse. Give me, cut me some slack. So nine, 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 do some long division. Nine, eight, one, oh. Boom! So it would be an 11% chance, about. But see, that's a weird number right there. That is not what they're asking. No way. Check their umbrella's labels. What percentage chance is that only two will walk off with their own umbrella? See, there's something to this. Because this also, uh, this math problem right here assumes that the first person would pick one, the second one pers person would pick one, and we don't really care about the third person. Which isn't right. Because if the first person picked up their own umbrella and the first per second person picked their own umbrella, the third person would have to get their own umbrella. Thus, there is a 0% chance that this would happen. Go. 
Every puzzle has an answer. Trick question, but I figured it out because of math. Haha! -ha! That's right. If two people manage to grab their own umbrellas, the third person is left only with their own umbrella to take. Her own. It's impossible for two of the three to pick up their umbrella. Got it. Uh, blue bed. Luke's blue likes the color blue. Let's go with that. All right, number 44. We're going a little bit long, but only by a couple minutes. Stamp Stumper. Puzzle number 44, Stamp Stumper. Oh, 50 pick right one. Ouch. Your friend just got back from the post office where she purchased a sheet of stamps with values ranging from 10 cents to a dollar. First, your friend cut out uh, the $1 stamp and set it aside. Then she divided the remaining stamps into seven uniquely shaped bunches, each worth a total value of a dollar. Can you divide this stamp sheet the same way your friend did? Is this Sudoku? Is this like Sudoku? <laughs> did they just Sudoku at me? Okay. Let's say... Oops. No. Uh... There. That right now equals 100. That equals 100. Oh, okay. I don't have to do that more. So 50 and 50, but that would leave this alone. So that doesn't work. So 60, 70, 80. That doesn't work. Oh dear. Oh dear. I can't do this. Clear. All right. So let's say this for now. This one's actually going to be a bit trickier. 70. Like that. So this is taken, this is taken. 40. 50, and then that, but no, we don't want that. That gives us 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. <laughs> Turtle Sword, is this Sudoku? Yes, Lamar, but not Sudoku, you know. No, this is much worse. Welcome to Sudoku Tetris. Oh god, he's right. He's right. Oh, it's Tetris. That's even worse. Alright, uh... Huh... Uh-oh. I think I found a problem. Because 50 can't be on its own. It's only right next to a 20 and a 30. So... And 20 can't be on its own. Okay, so we've gotten to the point where we've made a no-no. Made a no-no. Clear. Let's try this. Right now, this is always going to be our starting point, because it has three options. Working from here, we can go on to the rest, and it's a very small, closed-off option. So, that is our starting point, every time. 70, 80, 90... So if we get this and this, all these tens are cut off. Now. And if I do this... This is all set up. As long as I know how to math. Okay, that's all set up. 30, 50, 70, 80. That doesn't work, though. Alright, so let's cut that back. Alright, so this is good and this is good. Let's see if that works so far. No, that won't work. That won't work. These mess up a lot of things. So let's pull this back. You know what? Let's start with the highest number and work our way down. And see how that helps. So this makes 100. Actually, if we do this, that also makes 100. But then 70 doesn't work. Okay, so 70. 
here and here. Okay, so next number should be 60 that we're worried about. That works. Hmm, 30, 50, eh, but then see here, this doesn't work. Alright, so 60 doesn't work that way. But if I do this, it works. So 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So that works. So that's 50 plus 50. 50, 60, 70, 80. Okay, hold on. Order 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So no. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then 30 is on its own. Uh oh. Uh oh. I think we've got another stuck. That's only 80. That's 100. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Hey! I think I did it! Luke, here's my answer. No! Dang it! I mathed wrong. How embarrassing. It's not enough just to divide the stamps into a one dollar group. Each of the seven groups must be a different shape. Wait, what? The diagram here shows stamps divided into one dollar segments. However, the green sections are the same shape, so it's clear the particular configuration isn't a valid solution. Wait, that was a... That was a... I didn't know that was a condition for the puzzle. Uniquely shaped bunches. No! But I had the answer. <laughs> oh. This just became a lot more complicated. Okay. But let's still work with the same concept we had before. See, that 80 and 20 can't work. This actually helps. Told you, Lamar. Sudoku Tetris. <laughs> okay, but see, this actually helps. Because this helps us narrow down solutions. 80 has to be with this 10 and this 10. Because it can't be with the 20. Otherwise, it's the same shape as this. Just rotate it. As long as, that's a, that, as, long as that matters. So. 70. Let's keep that shape going. 60. No, because that would just be a rotation. 60, 70, 80, 90. So let's make it a Tetris block. Uh, uh? But then see what this does here. Pfft, that's a definite no-no. Yeah, that messes up too many things. This is way too many things. Tetris, why have you why have you done this to me? Rotation is a factor and it does matter because it showed me on the thing on the failure screen. Right, okay. Keep that in mind, Haven. Keep that in mind. Boom. So let's see if that helps any. This 30 has to be part of that, which makes it part of that, which means no, it can't work that way. So that means the 70 has to go. Because no, 50 can't do that. Okay, 70 has to be this. Has to, has to be the solution, because the 30 is block it off. From attaching to anything else. So this far, we are absolutely certain is correct, which is going to make things difficult. Because this 30 has to be part of that 50 now. And it can't go that way, so it has to go up, which means this is which means this already doesn't work. Which means 90 cannot be there. 
We're good! Think of falling brick. Think like a falling brick. <laughs> this is good though. We're learning that the 90 could not have been there. Actually, now that we think about it, the only one that works 100% is this one. Because we know the 90 has to be either with only one other thing. So the 80 we're absolutely 100% certain of. The 90 is the one that can change. Okay, so let's do it that way. We can't, because that blocks off 70. So... That means 90 has to be this way. We are now certain that the 90 has to be that. And that keeps the 70 like this. Okay, we're learning things. Alright, and if we follow this logic, 30 to 10 is 40, with another 40 is 80, and that means this has to be another shape. So we're good, so far. 30, 10, that makes it 40, that makes it 70. Tetris block. T-shape. Tetris block, Tetris block, hey! Would you look at that? That should do it. Sudoku Tetris, just like you guys were saying, thinking is the key to success. which means you very sneakily gave me hints. Shame. I was going to logically figure it out eventually, but thankfully your Tetris block thing wasn't what gave me the, the actual inspiration. The actual inspiration came from all this, so it's fine. Just be more careful. There are several ways to divide all the stamps into dollar groups. This is the only way where they get different shapes. Stamp Stumper. So we have no more of those. So why don't we end this off? Journal Gizmos and in. Rumors at the restaurant. The rumor mill is churning. Feeding the frenzy are the disturbing number of villager disappearances and thunders booming as rumored to emanate from the tower above St. Mystere. To top it all off, Crouton says there's shadowy figures running around town kidnapping people. We need to visit local cafe to find out more. All right, let's go to the end. Eternal Sword. Actually, I didn't know the answer. I was being sarcastic. <laughs> okay. I may have overestimated you. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> All right. The end is set up. Let's go to the gizmos. Oh, oh hey. We finished it. There we are. The little robot dog is finally assembled. Now we have to name the rascal. I have a feeling he'll come in quite handy. By the way, Luke, I have a present for you to mark the occasion. Turn off your Nintendo DS once, then restart the game. At the title screen, select bonuses, and you should have a new challenge from me. Oh no. Now I know you're excited about your present, but be sure to save before you restart your DS. Oh no. Layton's challenges, the inventor's house, has been added to your map. Please enter your dog's name! Chat! Guess what? I want you guys to name him. So, because of the delay, you guys have like 30 seconds. So, I'll go ahead and wait a little bit. And any you folks in chat, suggest a name that isn't something horribly lewd. Or offensive or anything like that. And we'll uh, see you. We have Wismo the Gizmo from Eternal Sword. Anybody else? I don't know if Wismo the Gizmo is going to fit the entire thing, but since Gizmo was kind of assumed, we, we can put Wismo. Definitely. I like it. It's it's It rhymes. It's rhymetacular. I'll give it another minute to see if... Or half a minute. See if anybody else wants to add anything. Okay, well, it looks like Wismo a suggestion. Wismo. Gotta housebreak him, huh? I. No, I want it lowercase. I. 
why is it not lower casing the I? That's a V. Also a V. Uh, there it goes. Wizmo. So he doesn't Wizmo all the carpet. <laughs> okay, we have our gizmo. Wizmo leads. Huh. Interesting. That's a mechanic you don't see. I will spoil this in Phoenix Wright versus Professor Layton. Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright. Whatever. So I have no idea what this guy does. And we also have challenges on the bonus screen. So we will take care of that next time. Thanks to all the